YouTube, what is going on? Crowder here, and today we're talking about Warzone Season 6, the best primaries on the big map, and rebirth, and ranked. There are a lot of weapon nerfs and buffs, and we're going to get into that right now, and then explain the brand new attachments that might or might not have some effect on your loadouts. All right, so we're going to scroll through most of the buffs and the nerfs, that we're not going to go too in-depth, because obviously I'm giving you the best of the best loadouts when it comes to TTK, recoil, and all the practicality stuff. Just for the sake of it, Warzone, they nerfed the BP-50, but that's the SMG version of it. The Holger 5.56 got a little bit of a buff. The M CW got a buff, the MTZ got a buff, the STG got a nerf. The SVA kind of got a buff as well, which is nice, but probably not for big map, and we'll get there towards the end of the video. And then a bunch of other guns have gotten nerfs and buffs. The M13C technically got a buff, nothing crazy. The M16 got a pretty big buff, and we'll get to that in this video. The Geist isn't that bad, and then a lot of these guns, in my opinion, aren't super uh, notable. The Tacti is not that bad. And then you go down all the way through these SMGs. There is a lot to talk about. And then you get the MW3 and that is all. So with all of that information that you just got, let's give you the fastest time to kill, the best meta loadouts, and just overall help your Warzone Season 6 experience on both maps. And before we get into those loadouts, there were brand new attachments that could affect your loadouts, depending if you're going to use these. And the first attachment we're going to talk about is right here, the X10 Binate Suppressor. It goes undetectable by radar. Obviously, it's a silencer and aim down sight speed. If you look at the statistics, of this specific attachment. All it really does is help your ADS. It doesn't really do much else. And then you obviously can see that the laser is actually visible in ADS. So I don't really think this attachment was even necessary to add to the game. I think they were just bored. If you want to try that out on some of the loadouts, uh, you can. I don't think this one's going to change your loadout too much. And then the other one is going to be the caster compensator. And it's going to be right here, which is horizontal recoil, firing aim stability, which we know that's a very important stat. It hurts your velocity a little bit, but that horizontal recoil at 34% is something that might be a little bit probably more useful, I would say, either on certain primaries or maybe some SMGs as well, because that could be really, really helpful when it comes to, you know, just the horizontal recoil of some of the guns. So this is something that I recommend testing out on that. But those are the two attachments that got added when it comes to muzzles. And there is one more that we need to talk about. And it is this one right here, the Brace Fire HC Grip. This is an under barrel and there's no stats on it. So you think, but if you actually go into the statistics of this gun, look at the weapon strafe speed, 96% weapon strafe speed. It helps your tax stance out and it is just in general a very broken attachment and i know this is a primary weapon loadout video of all the stuff that you guys need to know but for the bonus of this video and if you were enjoying this video make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and like the channel i'm going to be going so much harder on this channel for long form of all the information you know on top of our short form but i'm going to add this loadout in here for you guys as a bonus because it's using the new attachment and it is insane and you can see right here this is attack of alvir and if you throw these attachments on it guys 200 round belt you have 200 rounds in the magazine here with all of these attachments and you can see here when i pull up the stats ads movement speed is 6.0 so when you were in tax stands and you were strafing ads look at this look how fast i am moving with this gun while strafing and i also have 200 bullets 200 on the tack of alvir with this exact gun. So you can have some pretty crazy classes depending on which gun you put that brace fire HC grip on for the LMG. So that is a bonus loadout for you guys. Now let's get into the best primaries on the big map Urzikstan. And to start it off, we are going to show you guys the sniper. Now, if you guys watch my stream, you know this is my favorite build. I love this build. There is nothing better than sniping in Warzone. And this has the one shot headshot ability. If you use this charge barrel on it, it is basically hit scan. And yes, you can see right here, there is a thermal optic on it. It's a little ratty. When you see it this way, there's a lot of smokes that are used in the big map and a lot of people use thermal. So if you want to combat it, this right here goes through cold blooded. You can see through smokes and no one can get away from you. And if you don't really like that too, you can always just click the left stick in and you have that. So when you charge up, you can take out your enemy. It's pretty easy. So yeah, to start this off, this is the best sniper on the big map, and I will not be told otherwise. If you don't like the thermal, you can take off this optic and you can put on anything. Or again, you can obviously put on a rear grip or a quick bolt, and you can just use the default sight if you really want to too. So there's a bunch of different ways to build this. This is a really, really, really good 
primary sniper probably the best one in my opinion and it's very easy to use with the charge barrel the bullet velocity is nuts but with that we now got to go to our actual weapons assault rifles lmgs and show you guys the best of the best and coming in at one of the better guns right now in the actual warzone meta for urzikstan is going to be the brand new cast off lsw it is not my favorite but it is 100 usable it is in the meta and most people really are only using this as a secondary with what i just showed you with the crazy brace fire grip and all of that but if you throw these attachments on and you look at some of the stats you you do have a 960 bullet velocity which is not that bad and right here on your screen you can see the time to kill is actually pretty good it's not that bad it holds its range and just overall it's pretty easy to control it's not the easiest out of all the guns i'm about to show you if you get all the way to 61 meters and 868 time to kill is extremely fast and you're gonna have a lot of gunfights on the big map on our stand where you're actually shooting across the map with your teammates or your boys and even if you find yourself in that mid-range 792 is still really really usable and i'm going to show you what the recoil looks like on this gun now so to get an idea of what the recoil looks like if you just shoot it straight at a wall you can see that overall it has that little horizontal recoil but it's not that bad and when you're shooting at the enemies it is relatively easy to control if you just pull straight down on your stick and the biggest part about this gun is it has 100 rounds in the magazine but if you hit the reload you can't see it but right there that is a very fast reload to have all that ammo in the magazine. So this gun is usable in the meta, and we're going to move on to the next one. And next gun that we're moving on to is the F Season 5 MTZ, but this just got a buff, as you saw earlier in the video. And this gun right here is the real deal when it comes to the stats and the time to kill. And it's always been pretty good, but I think even with a little bit of a buff and just overall the other guns getting nerfed and the STG getting nerfed, this gun is 100% in the meta and the attachments are right here on your screen you have the quartermaster the brew and heavy support grip the clinch pro barrel the mtz marauder stock and then the 50 round drum and just overall this gun is very very good very controllable and if you want to see the recoil compared to obviously what we just shot if i shoot straight up it has a little bit of horizontal recoil not that bad and once you kind of get through the first couple shots you're going to be absolutely lasering people now the reason why i kind of put this after the cast off uh, LMG is that it's an assault rifle. It's going to have a nice reload, but overall, you're just a little bit more mobile with this gun. And when you use LMG, sometimes you're kind of stuck in the mud. So I personally prefer to use assault rifles when I can, and they're actually in the meta. But this one's a very fun one that you can kind of use and just overall have a good time with, especially if you're trying to use something a little bit different than some of the other guns that I'm about to show you, and it still holds its time to kill on the big map. And here is the next weapon. It is going to be the Holger 556. But the plot twist with this weapon, it did just receive a buff. The damage range is now insane. But if you go down here and you look at what I'm using, it is the conversion kit. The signal burst conversion kit is going to up the bullet velocity, which is the one thing this gun kind of lacks. And that's why I don't really love the automatic version of it on the big map. On rebirth, it's a different story. But you can see it helps your recoil, your hip fire, which doesn't really matter. And also the bullet velocity on this weapon is now really, really comparable for something on the big map. And you can see the stats on the screen before we talk some of these attachments. This gun's time to kill all the way up to 50 meters is wild. So you can really use this gun and absolutely shred people. The one thing I'll say about this gun is that you do have to actually hit your burst. And if you want to see what it looks like when it's shooting, you actually have to be able to hit the burst. But it doesn't have that much recoil. And the rate of fire is pretty easy. So if you can just get used to shooting a burst weapon or if you are a burst weapon connoisseur and you actually like burst weapons, you feel like, you know... That helps you aim this is the gun that i definitely recommend trying i have not been seeing a lot of people using it and these are the attachments i would recommend now if you want to even do something crazier you can take off the brew and support grip because you don't really need too much recoil control in my opinion with this gun especially since it's a burst and if you take off the brew and heavy support grip and you go to your ammunition you can throw on something like high grain that instead of 50 meters that time to kill threshold it is now at 58 with 12 bullet velocity and if you even don't really want to deal with the recoil control of that you can do high velocity and it's still going to shoot pretty good so if you go back to the firing range here and you shoot it you know it's a little bit more shaky but not that crazy to be honest with you so depending on what you value with this holger burst i definitely think this is a really really underrated shout and it's one of the best guns in the game that's not being used enough right now and now over onto the number two gun on this list out of all the guns that i'm giving you i think this is the second best gun on the big map i do think since it's an lmg it's a little bit more impractical that's why you can see even on the stats that i was just showing you that cast off really does have a great time to kill but it's control and the recoil and just being an lmg you can be stuck in the mud but i do think this one kind of breaks that mold a little bit more but before we get to the stats of this gun look at these attachments and there's one thing that you can definitely change up with this weapon so really quickly you can see that the bullet velocity is at 912 
I would say on the big map, anything from 900 plus is good enough. Once you hit 1,000 plus, that's really, really good, right? So you have all of these attachments on this gun that are going to make it shoot really good. I'll show you the recoil in a second. But going over to this stock, you have the wood stock equipped, which is what I like to kind of have as a default. And the reason why is that this helps your recoil just a bunch and the recoil gun kick. And I know a lot of you guys watching do not like recoil. You like the easiest guns to use. And bullet velocity, when it comes to shooting really far, a lot of you guys might not be shooting really far. So this is why I kind of recommend this one the most. But when I'm feeling really turnt or cracked, I take off this stock. And if you go to the ammunition and you scroll over to the mono ammo right here, you have vehicle damage, bullet penetration, and bullet velocity. And it barely hurts your damage range by one meter. It does not matter. And then if you look at this on the time to kill chart, the pulley mount actually has probably one of the best time to kills when it comes to that close range, funny enough. And then when it hits that mid range, the damage just never falls off and it has the best time to kill like ever. So it's very easy to shoot, very easy to control. And I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like without, without the stock right now. So as I'm shooting at this in the firing range, you can see pretty manageable. It's got a little bit of a bump. All right, and if you go over here and you shoot it at a wall, it is gonna go straight up and you can see like the little jiggle right there, which can be annoying. That's kind of why I like the stock, but it's gonna be up and then a little bit to the right, but it's not gonna be too crazy to control. And that's why when I like to use the other stock, especially when I recommend this build to anybody, if anyone ever really asked me my pulley build, I'll usually say this one before the other one. And the reason why is because this is just so easy to shoot. It's very, very user friendly. And just in general, it's gonna make it just a little less shaky and a little bit more straight up. And you can see right here, it doesn't have that horizontal. It kind of just goes straight up with a little bit of horizontal shake, but not that bad. These are the attachments right here. Again, you can either take off the stock and add whatever ammunition you want or leave on the stock for the easiest kind of just in general use of this gun. That is the number two. Now I'm gonna show you the number one gun in Warzone Season 6 right now, and I think you all know what it is. It is this bad boy right here, the DTIR 3006, the battle rifle, the brand new gun. Of course, it's pay to win. This thing already got nerfed once because it was so broken. And even after the nerf, it is really, really good. And these attachments on this gun as well make this thing have a zero recoil. This is probably the easiest shooting weapon in Call of Duty right now, probably through all of the seasons, in my opinion. And you can see right now the stats are on your screen. It has the best time to kill, I think, all the way up to 21 meters. And then once you have that mid range, the only thing that really beats it why the Holger Burst is kind of a good shout is the Holger Burst up to that 50 meter range. But you can see how easy and how good this gun does when it comes to holding that time to kill throughout all of the ranges and the practicality of this gun and the recoil of it being zero recoil with these attachments is insane. So going through these attachments, this is the number one loadout. So I'm going to show you just why I think this is the best, you know. The Quartermaster, really, really good for all of that, of course, with the recoil. We know all about that attachment. And then the Sanctum Barrel is what I like to use. It basically does your more recoil, your more bullet velocity, and people might recommend you to use the extended long barrel. I actually don't think it is necessary to use. I don't think you lose that much speed with the other one, and the Sanctum Barrel just makes it that much easier to shoot. So you have this Sanctum Barrel on it, on top of the quartermaster and then you go over here to the stock and the stock is going to do 20 20 20 and now that you just have this gun that is an absolute laser beam and usually i do not use the choreo 2.5 that much anymore but on this build specifically it is nuts so i'm going to show you what this gun looks like right now as you're shooting it and this is just insane it's insane if you shoot it at a wall really quick just so you guys can see what it's looking like you're going to have it right here you shoot it and you can just see the difference of when you're looking at these bullet patterns. Look how tight that bullet pattern is. And it just goes straight up and a little bit to the right. The easiest gun right now on Call of Duty to use is this one. But I have one more secret tip to show you about this weapon. Now, there's going to be a lot of you guys that don't like the Corio Eagle Eye no matter what. You're a Jack Glassless lover. I am that as well for most guns. You guys know that. But when you use this build and the Jack Glassless, look at this really quick. We're going to go into the firing range. And there's going to be a lot of that smoke on your screen. And it's not going to be that bad or anything, but there's a lot of visual muzzle flash and smoke, which kind of sucks. So what you want to do if you want to kind of avoid that is in the battle pass, if you go to the dead haunting black cell one and you actually unlock this one, of course, it's a little pay to win. It's war zone. I know. And again, this is not necessary to use it, but this does help out a lot. If you equip this dead haunting black cell and you put on all the same attachments we just did, and then you go to the firing range, you're going to have tracers. But with the Jack Lassa specifically, you're going to see a lot of streamers kind of like use this and be like why are they using this the reason why they're using it it gets rid of the muzzle smoke on this build so this is a 
A fun tip to use where if you're using the Jack Lastless, I would recommend using this specific blueprint of it because it's a little bit pay to win. But if you do the 2.5, I actually think it looks worse with the tracers with the 2.5 and I would not recommend that blueprint for this. So that is two ways to build your DTIR. Those are the best guns on Warzone right now when it comes to Urz Extend the Big Map. I'm gonna flash through some honorable mentions and then we're gonna get to Rebirth Island. And for the honorable mentions, I'm not gonna go too crazy about them. You guys know all about the STG. It took a nerf and it is still very easy to use, but you can see from the stats right here on your screen. We're going to talk about the STG and the Holger. And on that chart right now, it is the Holger, the blue dot Holger, not the white one, where it is not bursted. And the other attachments for that are going to be right here. So those are the attachments for the STG. You guys know that class. And the honorable mention for the 556, the reason why this is an honorable mention is just because the bullet velocity on this is not very good. And now you can take that off and you can throw either high velocity or high grain on it to kind of get back over that 900 mark. It's going to be a little shaky. It holds the time to kill. It's definitely usable. It's definitely a little bit different, but I think both of those guns, the STG's practicality of it being really easy to shoot is why it's even on the honorable mention. And then of course, this Holger 556 is not that bad as well. So that is going to wrap it up for the big map. Let's move on to Rebirth. Now moving on to the best primaries in Rebirth Island, we're going to be starting with the SVA. Now it says the S3 on the, you know, that means season three. This is obviously not a season three class. This is a season six class and I didn't rename it, but either way, these attachments right here, you're going to have the Iron Sight SVA, and you can see the stats on your screen. It kind of has a drop off when it comes to time to kill, but the big thing with this gun, it has no recoil. You can get a lot of bullets out with the burst because it has a fast burst. I recommend using this in burst and not auto, but you can use it in auto if you really, really want to. But if you look at these attachments, this gun has a 1100 bullet velocity. That range before it drops off, it goes all the way up to 50 with these attachments on it. And just in general, it is so, so easy to shoot. The iron sights are good. You're mobile. You can be quick with it. And all you got to do is switch to the single fire. And you can see right here, it just has really, really good, just kind of recoil. I mean, it doesn't really have recoil. What am I even saying? If I just shoot and I don't do anything and you just keep shooting over and over again, this is probably the easiest gun in the game to use if you can use a burst. So yeah, if you want to kind of have the best gun ever when it comes to just very easy, hit your routine shots, you got this. And now if you really want to use a sight and you don't like it, take off the stock, throw on a jack glassless, and you got the easiest gun ever to use on Rebirth. And you can see also, I said the bullet velocity thing about like Urzik Stand. The big thing when it comes to Rebirth is a lot of your fights, uh, even your assault rifle fights are within that like 20 to 50 meter range fight. You don't really need super long kills in Rebirth because a lot of the times you're taking closer fights, right? So this is why those damage drop-offs, in my opinion, with some of these loadouts don't really matter and why these loadouts are really good because you will be hitting your shots. And especially when people are moving like demons, that is going to matter. So that is what we're going to be using on the SVA. Let's move on to the next gun. And that next gun is going to be the cast off LSW, the brand new LMG again, but a little bit different than the big map build because you don't need a brew and heavy support grip, in my opinion, on the big, uh, on this map, just because a lot of your fights are going to be a little bit of closer range. You can see from the stats right here on your screen from the true game data, the time to kill in that medium range is very, very good. And if you throw on high green on top of that, it gets that medium range all the way extended to the 38, uh, to the 30, 40 meter range right there. 1100 bullet velocity. Velocity. Now, you would think like, oh, well, why are you going for bullet velocity on Rebirth, but not the big map? On Rebirth, I'm not really going for the bullet velocity, but that extra damage range can kind of make all the difference for those medium range gunfights. And then the bullet velocity is just a plus, but the extra recoil you get from high grain doesn't really affect you on Rebirth as much as it would affect you on the big map because you're not taking as long long range fights as you would on the big map. So I am a very big fan of using kind of builds like this when it comes to the Rebirth Island. And you can see here, shooting this gun is still gonna be practical. It's not gonna be like super, super easy, but you, you should be able to control this pretty easily. It has a great reload speed still. And just overall, this gun is gonna be something that you can easily get away with using it, especially if the new battle rifle does get nerfed. And next up on the list is gonna be really quick and easy. This is the Holger Burst again. I don't think really much would change. You can definitely probably take off the Bruin Heavy Support Grip here and put on the high green round because now you're getting that 50 meter range all the way up to 80. And you can see from the stats, if you get that 50 meter range all the way up to 80, this thing outperforms basically every gun on the list when it comes to those medium range fights. And as I just said earlier, those medium range fights are going to be key when you are playing Rebirth Island, especially when you're playing solos, if they ever add Rebirth Island solos back. So a very easy to use gun, manageable recoil. It's gonna have the bullet velocity, the time to kill from basically all ranges. And it's something where you can probably shred some squads with it too, if you are playing solo versus squads and you're an absolute demon. Let's move on to the next two guns. And now for this next gun, you are not gonna expect it, but this right here, the M16, the MW2 M16, you throw the conversion kit on this thing and all the way up until 36 meters, you can see from the true game data stats, it has a 
absolutely mind-blowing time to kill. And if you throw on high grain and you come back over here, you throw on the high grain, you get that pushed up all the way to 42 meters. You have a wild time to kill all the way up to 40 meters. And depending on how you play in your play style with Rebirth, as I was just stating, you can use this gun very, very effectively. Now, if you shoot this in the firing range, there's a couple ways to build it. I actually like having the Bruin Heavy support on because I do think this gun has a little bit of kick, which makes sense for the crazy time to kill, but it's still super manageable. And uh, this Iron Sight just reminds me of Verdansk and the old M4 meta, and I just love it. So I really, really do enjoy using this class, and it kills very, very fast too. But you can also kind of take off either high grain or you can take off the Bruin Heavy support grip and you can throw on the Jack Lassus Optic. And there's a couple of different ways you can build this gun and still have a lot of fun with it. So I recommend trying this out. This is an underrated build in my opinion. I think people are sleeping on it and I have just not seen enough people strutting with this gun specifically. So let me know what you guys think about this one. Drop a comment below and now I'm going to show you the best Rebirth Island class and then the best Rebirth ranked classes including an SMG as a bonus for watching the video to the end. And for the number one gun, you guys all know it was coming it's the dtir but built a little bit differently for rebirth and the way i'm doing it is going to be high green you take off the optic and you throw on the high green for the extra time to kill threshold all the way up to 28 so that crazy time to kill that you see from true game data is now up to 28 and the middle range is still going to be a little bit weird compared to the m16 and the holger but this gun having no recoil is obviously going to make up for that and you still have crazy bullet velocity with this so in ranked play as well as rebirth island i think this is the number one build and you can very easily easily get away with not using the sanctum barrel on rebirth because the recoil is not going to be that big of an issue with some of the closer range fights and you can use the extended long barrel to get more bullet velocity more range and also a little bit more mobility in the gunfights which can kind of help you out in rebirth and resurgent strength so you can use it this way and then if you are playing ranked and you don't want to use an iron type builder you're not comfortable with it you can just go right back to kind of using the big map build on ranked because ranked play plays a little bit slower in my opinion especially at the higher levels when you're kind of like you know taking those team fights and you need to be really really accurate so that is how i am rocking the number one gun either on resurgence rank or rebirth in general and now I'm going to show you the best SMG for Rebirth Ranked, and then we're going to end out the video. And personally, the number one SMG right now, I've seen all the ranked players use it, and the way I built it specifically is going to be this static. It hasn't changed. That's kind of a letdown in my opinion, but either way, it's going to have a crazy time to kill. And I use the Jack Slash Underbarrel, and the reason why I use that is for the 7.9 tactical sprint speed movement on rebirth and just movement in general with smgs is going to be a big reason why you win a lot of those close range fights i like the jack slash on that but if you don't want to use the jack slash on that i would recommend going over here for the power cord and then you get your ads movement speed up to a 4.1 and it's also a fair shot with a sprint to fire so there's a couple different ways to build this i like using the slate reflector um some of the best players in the world biffle included he uses the jack lastless i feel awkward with the jack glasses for some reason every time i use it i keep going back to it but i keep just not loving it and today i've been frying with the slate reflector so any optic you really want you can use the nidar model too it's all gonna work out i just got this on the weapon prestige master camo too it looks beautiful but yeah best smg for the rank play hopefully you guys enjoyed all this content if you did like comment subscribe and all that stuff and we have the best secondaries coming out the best console settings coming out and a bunch of other tips and tricks coming out long form for you guys including some camos i appreciate you guys and i'll see you in the next one peace